Hello everyone, and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I'm happy to report that we've got the resource scanning situation fixed. So we can we have we now have this resources tab here in the big maps, and I uh, it was thanks to viewer comments, of course, that I managed to get it all worked out. And it turns out it need uh, regolith needed to be upgraded, and MKS needed to be upgraded in order for it to work. The problem is that normally when uh, mods get upgraded for the newest version of KSP, I I uh, just uh, download the mod that was upgraded, but I neglect to uh, subsequently look for further updates sometimes, depending on whether I'm using the mod in that version or not. So in this case, I wasn't really using MKS in .90, so I wasn't keeping up with the with the upgrades, and so I only I had a older version of it than I really needed. So anyway, but uh, here we go. We've got indications of carbonite. I almost selected ore there uh, because, well, ore is how it is in the stock game now in point one zero. Anyway, we can see indications here, and so we need to find a place to sort of plop down our our base. And probably we're going to want something equatorial. This flag, Desric at the Greater Flats, does not seem like a particularly good place. This is two point. It it, it has an indication down here, so there's like two point nine. CDs of four percent. If I go over here, that's five percent. So these are the better areas, but uh, they might be a little bit harder to aim for. This one looks okay though. This one looks pretty wide. This one also looks pretty wide, but that's not as not as lucrative. Probably somewhere around here is what I'm aiming for. So let's say from from longitude negative 103 to negative 40. That's a pretty wide expanse. All right. So let's talk about our missions. This is of course our carbonite detection satellite around Minmus. We've got another one that I had launched in the previous episode currently orbiting Kerbin. We can send that out to some other location like Duna or something. So uh, we'll just keep that hanging around Kerbin until we can use it. So aside from that let's take an inventory of what we've got. We've got two space tugs orbiting Kerbin waiting to capture an asteroid and now our contract though we lost the contract to get the Class C asteroid on Minmus. We've got this weird contract to eject a Class D asteroid out of the solar system, which will probably take more than these space tugs. We'll need something immensely powerful to do that. But uh, we'll have to see. That, that, that might be a multi-launch project. Probably will be a multi-launch project. Um, the pill... that that that's a leftover. And Minmus support that is our that's shouldn't be our station is it hold on let me check ah it is our station okay well let me rename this minimus station somehow uh, colony control center no that's the curve attack colony control center oh boy my ability to type today is not particularly good that's worrying Okay, so Mimis Station. All right, back to Space Center. Okay, then the stuff we've got going over there is the asteroid docking port. We've got the Carbonite Sat in orbit. We've got the emergency hab on its way, and the LFO tanker in orbit. So let's first transfer the LFO tanker. Okay, plus side we do have a transfer to Mimis set up. Downside. We, we don't have much electric charge on this thing. Still seems like it thinks it's under acceleration. In fact, it is under acceleration somehow. How is it under acceleration? We can see that the maneuver node is changing. That is very weird. That should not be happening. That is changing a lot. 
We're going down. How are we going down? We're going up on this side. We're we're not in the atmosphere. We 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 seem to be doing a radial burn, but I don't have the engine on. Have I mentioned I don't have control either? I don't have control over this. This is glitching. This is glitching. Uh oh, we have a problem. Um, this seems like uh, is there a debug situation here? Uh, there's a there's a null ref thing going on. Oh crap. Well this is the first in any of my series is to have a null ref exception. This is bad. Well three minutes and nine seconds ago is not too bad. Okay, let's leave anyway and hope for the best there. I do have a backup save. Okay, well after going back those three minutes, it looks like the Alpha Tanker is in a safe orbit. I'll try and jump back to it and we'll see if it works, but after that I'll probably just quit out the program and see if that helps. Okay, we're in the dark. Well, let me see if I have control. It's very disconcerting. Obviously I, I ch check my installs pretty well. Uh oh, here we go. Time warping caused it. Time warping started the whole thing going bad. Okay, so we're with it, our carbonite sat, the one that we left in orbit around Kerbin. And what I want to do is I want to see if time warping with this has the same effect. Yes, it does. Yep. Starting time warp has that effect. Okay. Well, let me see what else I can update that might solve this problem. Alright, I'll be back with you. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Let's just, let's go to the LFO tanker. So what I've done is I've dumped uh, some of the mods that I added in the interim. I had added asteroid recycling technologies and B9 procedural wings. I I think everything else is upgraded, so that's the worrying part. I tried to uh, knock down a few little bits and pieces here and there, but um, there isn't too much to do. If a restart isn't going to help, then I don't know what will. Okay. Well, that's all right. Okay. Well, it looks like maybe a restart helped, or will it uh, mess with me once I make a maneuver node and actually try to do something? Now, the station isn't renamed yet. Uh, I, oh, well, it might have kept that. I, I think it must have kept that, yeah. Okay, well, there's an encounter. As if this thing didn't have enough promise with the low electric charge, but here we go again. We'll have to keep it in a high orbit around Minmus so it uh, doesn't lose electric charge while in orbit. The higher the orbit, the less it's blocked by Minmus itself. Well, okay, looks like orbit stuff is clear. Tentatively. Okay, well, alright, restarting worked. Uh, maybe I'll add the stuff that I took out back in later, but uh, that's not a priority right now. But yeah, that's the first time I've had that particular null reference exception issue in any of my series. I've seen it before though. I've seen it uh, with people streaming. Just haven't uh, experienced it myself. Well, at least the engine replenishes, replenishes electric charge. I keep forgetting that I actually do have ambient light adjustments in here, so anyway, I've turned it up. Probably should... I mean, it doesn't matter what their orientation is, but I guess I will rotate this. It's really amazing how efficient this thing is in terms of lifting 
liquid fuel and oxidizer. Of course, these tanks were completely empty the whole time. And so we have 2,000 delta V. When those are empty, we have 2,000 delta V with just this tank. More than that. Okay, here we go. A little bit off, obviously. The burn with the LVN took longer than I thought. We might need a mid-course adjustment with this thing. Uh, no, uh, maybe we can hit it there. Okay. Alright, minimus periapsis, 136 kilometers. Sounds fine. Inclined, but uh, we'll accept that for now. Still got about 1,200 meters per second left. And it's on its way. We have one more launch to do. We need to actually get the the converter station, right? This is the tanker. This brings it into orbit, but it needs to the carbonite needs to be converted on the surface first. And so we need to launch that apparatus. Okay, so here is our carbonite tower. And while troubleshooting the Nelra thing, I did dump M FMRS just to see if it was causing a problem. And it turns out there is a newer version, so I put a newer version of FMRS back in so that we can recover the Sparrow 9. Newer version 4.90, I mean, of course. There is an even newer version that won't work with this, but uh, we aren't using that. Now, this is the Carbonite Tower, and you can see why it's called that. We've got plenty of storage for Carbonite. We've got a converter, and of course, outlets to connect to the LFO tanker. Now we've got an LFO tank at the top. It's still bottom heavy. It's got the LFO tank at the bottom that is full and it will bring itself to the surface, hopefully be stable. Uh, it's got large landing struts, but it is a bit unwieldy. Um, does have a large SAS unit, reaction wheel, so hopefully that'll add to stability. I don't know if it has enough electric charge. It claims so, but just in case, we've got a carbonite generator on top, so that'll provide the power for for converting the carbonite into uh, uh, for converting carbonite. Okay, so I think that's everything spoken for. And yep, this is gonna be oh boy, it's gonna be an awkward launch. That's for sure. It's yeah, it's a tall payload, no mistaking that. Fortunately, it's a very short rocket. So, Delta V looks like this. So, we've got ample to bring the Sparrow 9 stage back down. Hopefully, we'll be able to manage that. Alright, let's see if it works. Okay, FMRS is armed. We've got a lot, a lot, a lot of mods over here now. Wow. Okay, throttles up. SAS is on. Smart ASS is ready, and without further ado, let's light and go. Still don't know which mod added the rough terrain on this side of the launch pad between itself and the coast. Remind me to thank the person for that. <laughs> No, it's got to be a mod. Okay, looking good so far. We are going for a steeper ascent than normal because we're trying to bring the Sparrow 9 stage back to the KSC. RAM usage right now is not giving me any warm feelings about my potential for actually being able to see the recovery dialogue for this stage. We still haven't actually been able to recover it completely properly with FMRS. Well, pretty smooth so, so far, even though the payload is quite tall. Actually, maybe this thing is too heavy. I'm going to separate here. Okay. Yeah, it was seeming like we weren't reserving enough fuel there, so I decided to go ahead. It's possibly the really huge fairings, too. Should be okay to release the really big fairings. Let's find out. Yep. Okay, here we go. 
shut off, and we're coasting to Apoapsis. Pretty much in orbit, just a little bit of burn to go at Apoapsis. Very good trajectory on launch. Not precisely at Apoapsis, but I was just in a hurry. I'll go to 120 by 100. Not nah, pretty much. Okay, so it is safely in orbit and ready for its Minmus transfer, but let's go back to the, uh, the Sparrow 9. Okay, here we go. Separation. At least we were able to jump to this part. That's nice. Smart ASS is off. SAS on. And let us just rotate to the correct position for our boost back. And I've been using MechJeb's landing guidance. I dumped trajectories for now. Uh, I know I, I got some tips about how to use it better, and uh, I uh, I think a more updated version is necessary for far. Uh, again, same situation as I had with Regolith. I didn't have the most updated version of trajectories, so I'll try and get that in later. But uh, because of the glitch earlier in this episode, I decided to hold off on that for now. Okay, so. Uh, here we go, we are just waiting for the thinnest possible atmosphere to give us the best possible efficiency on this boost back. Now previously we've been landing close to the coast so we should overshoot this. So whatever whatever Mechjeb says. Now so let's overshoot it by let's say two kilometers. Okay let's do it that way since we've been landing short all this time. Let's see if two kilometers will do it, I don't know for sure. Okay, back to retrograde. This is another reason why I do the boost back very high so that I can turn without the atmosphere getting in my way. Seem to be a little bit south, but I'm not gonna correct that. I'm not gonna try and hit the launch pad this time as long as I get somewhere close to it instead of always on the coast that'll be helpful nice drag but let's try and get further in before I deploy the air brakes we'll be hitting land without any further correction at least but not as far in as I'd want. Probably we need like four kilometers at least. Okay, air brakes. And gear down. And let's start using some thrust. Oh, not too far off actually. Let's get the Verners on this. Wow, balance of this is still not great. Get down before your fuel runs out. Okay. Oh, uh, the game crashed, of course. And I don't see our spent stage sitting around it anywhere. I was hoping that at least uh, Sparrow 9 would be sitting around waiting for us. It didn't seem like that. Uh, oh. Okay, well, our Carbonite Tower is in a suborbital trajectory, so it, it's right there. Um, do we have... Let's see if the other stage is still hanging around. No? No, the other stage is has just disappeared. Oh well, there goes that idea. Honestly, I wonder what it would take to get FMRS to work with stuff. It just it, it isn't doing its job. Let's face it. No, no, forget it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let me just. Once again, take a quick peek to see. There's there's no suborbital trajectory going on here. I mean, there's no uh, indication of the launch stage. 
and no marker for it, nothing. So yeah, it just disappeared on us. We're on our way to Apoapsis. Well, let's... Oh, let's see if we really need to get into orbit. We could probably transfer to Minmus. We don't need to get into orbit right now. But this is very disappointing, as I'm sure you can tell I'm not happy about the fact that I can't seem to actually recover a stage with FMRS. Especially when the Sparrow 9 is such a nifty way of going about things, and is successful, except that I never actually managed to recover it. Okay, well, Minimus Periapsis of 20 kilometers sounds fine to me. Doesn't really matter which way around this is going, it just needs to land on the surface eventually. If anybody knows what could be complicating the issue for FMRS, I'm sure FMRS is supposed to work with stuff. I mean, uh, it can't be that uh, it has this issue for everybody consistently. I mean, of course, we've had consistent issues with FMRS when trying to recover stages. Um, it might be the RAM, I mean, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, let us proceed. Okay, that stage is spent. And here we go. 1,400 Delta V for this stage. That's because only this tank is full. This tank up here is empty as well. Now, this is a storage unit. It, uh... It really isn't meant to... it doesn't have a drill. So just keep that in mind. We have a separate driller. We've already got one drill unit there. But maybe we can make a better one, given that we now have a different system. We really only need a Minmus hopper. The one that we've got right now is meant to get to the surface of Minmus and then back up into orbit, and that might be a little bit excessive. Since this thing will be able to refuel the hopper, we don't need it to have quite as much uh, spare delta V. Okay. Let's see how close we can get. Okay, well, 113 kilometers is fine. Alright, so all of my intended missions are on their way to Minmus. The first one to arrive, well let's go to Space Center to see what the order of operations is. Okay, so... First of all we have the Asteroid Docking Unit. And I wonder if, can we add an alarm for it? Yeah, yeah, we can. So time to SOI change 2 days, 21 hours or so. Let's add alarm. And that's all right. Emergency hab. Uh, no, we want an SOI change. Or is there some... Oh, it doesn't have an SOI change. Okay, we'll have to deal with that immediately. So that's the next thing we'll go to. Here, we do have an SOI change. So we'll just add that alarm. And this one... Add that alarm. All right. So the thing we need to figure out is how to get the emergency hab back on track for Minmus. And my plan is that this asteroid docking unit is too glitchy to actually attach to the station. Take a its goal is to grab the asteroid that we already have in orbit around Minmus and attach it to the station. But I think it was too glitchy. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it the marker for where we're going to set up our base. And then we'll, uh, so we'll use it as the marker and land everything else close to it. And so it's going to land on Minmus. But anyway, let's get to the emergency hab and line it up properly. Okay, we have a thing here. We've got a 20.9 meter per second burn to get a Minmus encounter. And I'll just do that. This thing turns mighty slowly. Does not have a big reaction wheel at all. I'll have to be careful on landing. So we obviously haven't uh, started sending the actual MKS uh, modules over to Minmus. And uh, I'm just starting out the base similar to the way I started out the base 
on the moon without uh, too many of those modules. Once we... oh, this one didn't extend. Let's extend that. Anyway, uh, once we get uh, properly set up, we'll get the MKS modules started out there. But I want to make sure that things are actually happening on Minmus this time. Uh, in the mo on the moon, uh, we really haven't been doing carbonite mining there. Uh, it isn't quite efficient to do so, I guess. So, yeah, I want to make sure that it is very efficient to do this sort of mining on Minmus, and then we'll proceed with everything else. Okay, well, alright, 1,094 kilometers. At least it gives me something to add to... Where where did the uh, alarm clock go? Alarm clock it doesn't show itself in the map view, that's weird. Okay, um, SOI change? Yes, and alarm. Alright, so actually this is first in getting in there, so let's just follow it in, and we'll get into Mimis orbit, and then we'll have the asteroid docking unit plop itself on a particular location where there's a lot of good, nice, juicy carbonite. I guess the asteroid docking unit hits Mimis over here, that's why this one is first. But not a huge gap between all four of our missions here. Alright, so this is our approach to Minmus, obviously plenty to correct. Okay, let's get to 29 kilometers. That's probably as little inclination as I can give it with this trajectory, so all good. 141 will leave us with 800 meters per second left. Okay, turning too much, turning too much, stop that. Okay, that's pretty good. It's sort of a backwards 46 degree inclination with a 36 kilometer periapsis. And we've got 804 meters per second left. All right, so now just orbit. Well, at least there hasn't been a repeat of the glitch we saw at the start of the episode, that null reference exception. Okay, orbit achieved, and bring it down to something reasonable, that'll do. So 58 by 30, and we can leave it here for now. Okay, so asteroid docking unit, and we'll find a good spot to land all this stuff. Okay, here's the asteroid docking unit, and you can see how close we are already to Mimis SOI. We're still technically in Kerbin SOI, but just a little bit of time left. You can spot Mimis right there. So, for those who didn't see the previous episodes, um, the reason it's glitchy is because of this clipping here that's going on. And, I don't know, I thought I had left enough space, but it doesn't look like it. And there you see, as we came out of time warp, it glitched just now. So that's why we can't hook it up to the station. And so it's completely useless except as uh, as the way I'm intending to use it as a marker. Fortunately it looks like it's approaching Minmus in a much more equatorial manner. So if we burn radially towards Minmus should be able to get into a plane that will hit most of our likely landing sites. Okay, that should be safe. Alright, let's do this thing. Okay, that's the end of the transfer stage. So, separate and now we're going to actually have to do things in reverse. We were configured to control from the launch clamp, uh, not the uh, launch clamp, the clapatron. And so we have to turn around, light the engines, and now do things this way. Fortunately, we still have enough 
thrust to weight ratio to land on Minmus like this. Okay, that's a fine orbit. And now let's figure out where we should land. Really wanted to hit this patch here, right? Unfortunately, it's only the big map that has all this stuff. I think the small map doesn't. You can't uh, select resources on the small map. Uh, our apple is going up, but there's not too much I can do about that. So we've got we've got a path here now. I'll let it continue. I want to hit here. So I'm, I'm targeting got a lot of lines here going now targeting latitude let's say 11 longitude negative 46 11 negative 46 okay where is that <laughs> okay well we definitely need to retrograde here Retro burn. I want to. Oh, uh, abort auto land. No, no, no. I want to pick a target on the map, right? Okay, there we go. That's what I want. 11. Come on, computer. Okay. Oh, it's, it's probably in here. Yeah, okay. Hold on. Uh, well, let me. Uh, go for here. Alright, now let me double check that that's a good place. Alright, so we've picked our target. I don't know how the heck it thinks we're gonna be landing there on this pass. Um, but I can make all the maneuvers necessary as long as we aren't wiggling about randomly. Okay, Oh geez, it should be able to show a landing prediction now, right? Come on, MechJet. All the way over there, I think you're probably making a mistake on that. Yeah, I don't trust MechJet here. At least it let me pick a target on the map so that I can aim for that. Yeah, I, I don't know how MechJeb thinks that I'm going to be landing over there. Really don't understand that. I mean, I know the, the Mimis is going to rotate a bit, so I probably do have to proceed a little bit further along this direction. Okay. Well, we are landing on our docking port here. <laughs> Hopefully it can deal with that. Uh, actually, no. Well, no, I, we, we can land on the docking port. We'll be using RCS to land then. Okay, we are retro burning for the surface. We don't have that much thrust weight ratio, so we need to get started on that. I wonder if our mono propellant load is too heavy to actually land with RCS. We'll see. Okay, surface horizontal velocity is pretty low now. So we'll try and flip around and see if we can slow down our descent speed using just RCS. So I've got control from here. Yeah, we can. Okay, but we've got a long way down. We've got five kilometers to descend. Perhaps there'll be some some lunar rotation. Not well, not really lunar. What what's the adjective for Minmus? Minmuser. There's no good adjective for Minmus. Hmm. Somebody should come up with an adjective for Minmus, like 
you know, Mooner or Lunar, and what's what's it for Minmus? I guess it's just Minmus, right? Still, uh, okay, uh, so our Carbonite Tower has has entered, well, it's going to enter Minosphere Influence in a minute. Scansat Big Map shows that at this location, Carbonite Concentration, well, it's about 4% or less. Uh, north of us, it's better. So we'll be trying to land the modules north of where we are right now. I am going to deactivate these thrusters so I can use my throttle with the RCS. So the upside of doing this is of course we don't have trash in orbit. The downside of doing this is of course we have trash on the surface. Uh, well, there we have it basically. It probably means that I'm adding a little bit more lag down here, but hopefully not too much. This isn't that complicated a craft. Okay, it has landed on site. No problems. Not too sure what else to do with it, but here it is, and so we have marked out our territory. In the next episode, I am going to bring in the currently approaching, whatchamacallit, the tower. Alright, uh, the tower and then the tanker. Where is the tower? That's the tower. Okay, so we'll take care of that first next time and then the tanker. Alright. So, on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.